Hi guys, today we're taking care of the mental game. And I want to explain to you how I did it when I was on tour. I had the pleasure to work with uh, Pia Nilsson and Lynn Merritt, uh, who founded Vision 54. And um, one of their biggest tools is the box play. And the box play helped me quite a lot just to get a development in my pre-shot routine. And I want to show it to you because I can... I can watch it on some, so many amateurs that they always do different things before the shot and they actually choose the club before they even check the wind whatsoever. So let's get it started in order. So I built you up um, three different boxes and we have here the thinking box at the back, then we have the preparation box and then we have the playing box. So if you're here or let's say you find your ball laying on the fairway, hopefully. Um, you park your cart or your bag next to your ball. And a lot of people, they have a watch or they have a laser. And what they do right away, they choose a club um, just by, by the number, right? Which is not so bad. At least you check the number. But finally, you should check four things. And that includes the thinking box. So first, what I look at is the ball lie. So if you have a bad lie of the ball, the ball will certainly not travel as far as it would have a decent lie, right? So you have to consider that. So you think, okay, if right now I have a good lie, um, so I don't have to take a plus on that or a minus, but you have to consider that. Then the second one, of course, the measurement. So let's say we have 130 meters, which is like 143 yards. Um, I could get a slight uh, idea of, an, of a club, but it's not finished yet. So let's say, let's keep the 130 meters. Then the third thing you always should check is the weather. Of course, everybody will say now, yeah, of course we have to check the wind if it's from the front, if it's from the back, if it's helping, hurting, to the, from the right, left, whatsoever. But you also have heat and you also have um, cold, you have rain, you have fog, you know, and uh, especially here, I mean, I'm from Munich and we have all four seasons and our ball will certainly not fly as far in spring and in fall as it does in summer, right? So you always have to consider that we just had super hot days and the ball is traveling super far, the, the, the ground is dry, everybody thinks, you know, training is worth it. Um, but no, um, jokes aside, you have to consider the weather. So today we have like 25 degrees, 20, between 20 and 25 degrees. I would say that's a normal temperature. Um, no wind, so I don't have to take any plus on it. If you have it against you, put some numbers on it. Let's say 130, if you have, you have the wind in front of you, it's like 140 meters, it's 135. You know, you have to get a feeling for how much the wind is really hurting. Um, so that was... The third, so we have the lie, we have the distance, and then we have the weather. And finally, and that is what really most golfers forget, is the pin position, where the flag is positioned on the green. You know, if you have the flag sitting in the back of the green, you might want to be a bit short of it, you know, because the danger is behind the green then. If you have a short flag, you certainly don't want to be short, so you put five meters on it, so you make sure you hit the center of the green. And you know, I'm just, um, um, there was a saying by Annika Sörenstam, who always used to be my idol. She said, if you hit, hit the greens 18 times centered, center of the green for 18 times, we have 18 times a birdie putt, which is absolutely true. So sometimes you, you have to forget to focus on the distance for the flag. You really have to, to think of the, the, the pin position, right? So those four things you have to consider before you grab your club out of your bag. So, okay, so as I said, we have perfect conditions. The ball lie is nice. We have 130 meters and let's say the flag is in the center of the green. So 130, 135 meters is my eight iron. So finally I take my eight iron and um, I have my club. I had a big thinking process over the club, but now I got it and there is no, no doubt about it anymore, right? Of course I can think if the flag position is on the right, I wanna hit a little bit more cut into the green. Then of course I have to consider taking a different club as well, but those are really special thoughts. But all those thoughts are supposed to happen here in the preparation box. And then you have the right club. 
So now I'm leaving my preparation box. I go into the thinking box. So that's an area, let's say two, three meters behind the ball um, where I really make up my mind what I want to do. You know, I mean, I take my practice swings, you know, I'm, I like to fade the ball. So sometimes I really like to take the club a little bit outside and take it inside back. Um, and I really want to get an idea of what I want to do. So once I have that idea, and you can watch that a lot on tour on TV, of course, that everything is happening behind the ball and all of a sudden the players turn just right in the, in the back of the ball and they're searching for a little thing in between the ball and the, the goal, the target line, right? So um, I can see a lot of players looking for a in-between target like two meters ahead of the ball, but this is way too far. Please do yourself a favor and look for something just in front of the ball, like 30 centimeters, like a foot. Um, it's so much easier for the eyes to get a connection with the club face than so far ahead, okay? So I'm still here in my thinking box. I'm taking my grip with my left hand because this is my, my guidance hand. I wanna have this hand really sitting well on the, on the club. I take my, my target, my in-between target, you know, whatever. If the wind is coming from the right, of course, I have to, to aim maybe a little bit um, onto the right side, whatever. This is here happening in the thinking box. So now I'm all set here. I got the right club. I got my in-between target. I know everything what I need to know. I got my purpose in my swing. And now I have a yellow line here. On purpose, I put it in a color because this is the commitment line. This is so important. This is such an important thing because this I need to cross over. I have to step over this commitment line just to, to pull the trigger finally. So I'm ready. Now I cross over and now there is no thinking or changing decisions anymore. Now I'm just doing my process. I take my club face to my target line and I look at the target once or twice. Then I set my feet parallel. I check my feet again and then finally I do the shot. Right, and then finally the shot is gone. And then of course you can do a post shot routine, but that I will explain to you in a different video. But just to sum it up here, you know, this is a real structure of how you prepare for your shot. And there, you know, if, you, if you're standing over the ball and you have any doubts and all of a sudden you feel gusty wind coming, you shouldn't stay in this playing box because here you pull the trigger by stepping over that commitment line. So if you're not sure if you have some, you know, we have those clowns in our head, right? Spinning around and just talking not good things, then you have to get away again. You have to go back to the preparation box and just start, just back off, start the process over again. You got the right club already, but here you just take another practice swing, you cross over the commitment line and here we go again. And um, this is finally how you do it. And you can watch it a lot on TV. Um, then, you know, sometimes uh, the guys or the girls are standing over the ball and then all of a sudden they back off again, uh, which is absolutely correct because I'm sure you've had that experience before where you uh, hit the shot and you say, I knew it. You know, you shouldn't know it's not gonna work out well. You have to prepare yourself that it's gonna work out well. And you know, if, if something goes wrong, if the, sh if the club was not correct, you maybe have a lesson learned and you just do it better the next time, pretty soon for the next shot, right? So that's the box play. I hope you like the system. Just try it out. Of course, you don't have to build up all those sticks. It's, a, it's in those boxes you have to have in your mind, of course, and also the commitment, commitment line. But of course, if you want to practice it, just put a stick down and really cross over a, a real line, you know? So I really hope you like that video. If you like it, of course, put a thumbs up, follow this channel. If you want to know more about me, just follow me also my channel on Instagram. And um, of course, now have fun practicing and enjoy the game. See you soon.